Hi girls, I'm going to do the TTC tag that Candid Mommy um, Jenny that she did and I'm sure other people have done it too. I just haven't, um, I know a lot of people have done it, but I just copied the questions from her video. And I have them over here, which is why I'm going to keep looking that way. Um, but we'll just go through them here. So how long have you been trying? Um, we've been trying six months. Um, one of the cycles, I was really sick, so the timing wasn't great. So you maybe could say five months. Um, how many kids do you have? I have one. He is 17 months. Um, how old are you and have you? Um, we are 26. <laughs> And we are only four days apart, so we are really close in age. Um, how long have you been married? It will be three years in June. What are some crazy things you do, TTC, or while trying? Crazy things. Nothing crazy, nothing that you guys don't do, like um, charting and OPKing and stuff like that. I don't know. We haven't taken any extreme crazy measures or anything, so... Does your hubby know all about the TTC cycle? Yeah, but I don't think he is very interested in it, because I'll, you know, tell him whatever, and he... I think, like, he'll listen, but I don't really think he cares. So... I don't know. That kind of sounds cold, but... I think, so that's just how he is. Um, I think a lot of guys don't really want to know. Maybe some do, and maybe, you know, if it w was taking longer, but um, it kind of takes the fun out of it for them. And it, it takes the fun out of it for us, too. But, um, you know, if you want to have higher chances of conceiving, then, you you know, you have to go through the TTC process. Um, have you been diagnosed with any kind of infertility? No. Um, I am breastfeeding, and I think that has a lot to do with why it's taking so long and I'm actually I'm gonna go to a toddler and tandem nursing group tonight um, I go every like other month um, to talk to the women there so I'm gonna talk with them because they're they have a toddler um, and or tandem nursing and most of the mothers there are tandem nursing or are pregnant in nursing so obviously they got pregnant while nursing so um, I'm kind of looking forward to talking with them. And I'm also going to meet with my OBGYN on the 22nd to talk with her about um, if breastfeeding could be my issues causing low progesterone or something like that. Um, we got pregnant with my son on the first try. So, you know, six months, it's a big difference. Um, we were lucky the first time. Um, but you know, it's been six months now. So that's why I'm like, what's going on? Um, and I'm kind of assuming it's the breastfeeding at this point. Okay. So what keeps you busy in the two week wait? Um, I was buying something for the baby every two week wait for the new baby. Um, but we kind of stopped that because it was making me too excited and um, impatient for the new baby. Like, I don't want to have everything for the new baby before I'm pregnant because I want to find out if it's a girl or a boy. And, you know, I, I don't want to buy all gender neutral things. So I kind of, I bought like diapers. I bought new nipples for the bottles. I bought everything already during my two week waits in the, in the past that we need that are like you don't need to know a gender to get them, but I kind of want to hold out. Like I want to get cute little blue or pink little swaddle blankets and things like that. So I'm, I'm kind of done doing that. Um, I guess the only thing that really keeps me busy is, um, taking care of my son and working. Um, and though the combination of those two keep me pretty busy. Um, what day do you usually ovulate? Day 13, generally. I have ovulated as late as day 18, and that was when I came off the birth control pill the first month. And I also have ovulated as early as day 11, and that was after the miscarriage that I had, um, which was at four weeks, so it was really early loss, and I ovulated 11 days later. So um, what sex are you hoping for? Okay, so my husband really wants a girl. 
I want a boy for my son, but the more I see how much of a boy my son is, I really want a little girl too. So I'm going to be happy if it's a boy because I want that for my son. I want him to have a brother. But at the same time, for my husband and I, like, I would really like a girl because I think one boy keeps us busy enough. But that being said, additionally, in my husband's family, there aren't a whole lot of girls. So who knows? Um, how many prego books do you have? I have a lot because... I was going to show you my bookshelf over there. That whole like second shelf, not the whole shelf, about half of that shelf are pregnancy books. Um, it's because I've been pregnant before. I'll show you my favorite one though. This is my favorite one, Mayo Clinic Guide to a Healthy Pregnancy. And it breaks down like, like you can see this, but every week and well that would be delivery so just kidding. Um, but it breaks down like week one to four, what's going on and all of that. So this was a really good source. And the other book I really like is this one, The Pregnancy Bible. It's, um, just has a lot of pictures and whatnot. Um, so I really like this book too. And of course I have the what to expect when you're expecting, what to expect the first year. Um, books like that, and those are really good and fun to read too. HPTs, you go through a cycle. Too many. I buy the cheap internet ones, and I normally start testing about 8 DPO, and I try to only test once a day. But those tests are so cheap, um, yeah, it's hard to not take them. So what I'm doing now is I'm not ordering them until like until like 6 DPO and then by the time they get here then I only have them for when I need to take them. Um, what have you bought for your baby or pregnancy already? Um, I've kind of done that in other videos and I just kind of went over that earlier in another question but um, just like nipples to replace on all the bottles that we already have, the different flows, the slow, medium, um, like stage one, two, three, and variable flow nipples, um, diapers. I did buy one thing for the pregnancy, and I haven't shown this to you guys yet, but it's a, I got this on baby steels. It's a little tape measure, and you measure your belly, and then there are little stickers you can put on there when you feel the first kick and things like that. Um, it's just a fun way to kind of visually chart what's going on as your belly grows. Um, that's the only thing I bought for pregnancy so far. What themes or designs do you like for a nursery? I don't know. Um, my son's room is the blue turtles and it's blue and brown and all the his furniture is like espresso color and um, the only thing I can say that I really like in a nursery is espresso, like the dark wood. And um, a rocking chair. <laughs> Those are the two things I have to have in the nursery. But as far as themes go, you know, that's something I like to think about when I'm pregnant, not now. And do you plan to do pregnancy vlogs? Yes. And I did a couple pregnancy vlogs with my last pregnancy, so you can check those out if you want. You're going to have to go way back in time, though. Um, who are your favorite moms or parents to watch on YouTube? I do watch um, Candid Mommy which is Jenny, and um, XXX, Joel Poe XXX, which is Lucy, and family of three now, and that is Lacey. Um, those are like the three main girls that I started watching on YouTube. Um, and you want your labor or birth plan to go. Okay, so last time, my son was measuring big. I had 17 ultrasounds throughout my pregnancy because... I was high risk, um, so I'm assuming I was high risk just for my own medical conditions, so I'll be high risk next time too, which means a lot of um, ultrasounds and everything, but what I'm getting to is they found out that my son was big, um, measuring 8 pounds, 4 ounces um, at 39 weeks, and he was measuring like my whole pregnancy like 2 weeks ahead of where he should have been. 
Um, and I'm not that big of a girl, and I have a tailbone that points into my pelvis, which makes the birth canal smaller. <laughs> so um, I was scared to death to deliver. But I didn't want a C-section because I have a blood disorder, and I would have to have blood transfusions and all this stuff that I didn't want to deal with. So um, we went ahead and I was induced at 39 weeks the day after I had that last sizing ultrasound. And um, he was born and he was 8 pounds, 3 ounces, 20 inches long. So he was a big boy. Um, he did a lot of damage to me. I had to go through physical therapy for like three months um, before I started feeling okay again. And I had an epidural like when I was like 4 centimeters. And I was on Pitocin, and it just, you, you all know when you have one intervention, it causes another intervention, another intervention. But they try it, they didn't try to scare me. I was scared to death myself because I knew my tailbone pointed into my pelvis like that. Um, and they told me, and I read, and, you know, I was told by multiple people, there was a high likelihood that my tailbone would break in delivery, which is why I was like, I want an epidural. Like, I don't want to feel bones breaking. Um, so, you know, I got the epidural because I was scared. And my tailbone didn't break. And he actually moved it into a more desirable position. So um, I've actually been in less pain with my tailbone after delivery than I was before. Um, you know, they, the doctors told me that some people who don't have that problem with their tailbone have their tailbone break, so that mine would almost certainly break. Anyways, my point is, um, it took me two hours to push them out because I couldn't feel anything. And all the pushing is, I think, what did all the damage. Um, so next time, I probably will get an epidural, but I really want to look into a walking epidural where... It numbs me a little bit, but not um, not to the extent that the other epidural that I had did. And, um, like, I still want to be able to feel. I just want, like, the edge taken off. But I don't want to take any drugs because I don't like feeling like I'm in an altered state. Like, I don't like being drunk. I don't like drinking. I don't like anything that makes me feel out of control. Um, so... And ideally, I don't want to be induced again because apparently when I went into the hospital, I was already in labor. I was having contractions. I didn't even feel them. Um, I had been in labor for three days, and I was just slightly uncomfortable. Um, they turned that Pitocin on, and yeah, um, it hurt. And I don't actually remember the physical pain. I just remember, you know, wanting the epidural. But, um... I'm amnestic to like what it actually felt like. I can't remember. So next time, to make a long story short here, I would like to um, go into labor naturally and um, get an epidural. I, I want it weaker epidural than what I had. So, yeah. And I'm also looking into using TENS. Um, you know, to if I do get an epidural to kind of um, not get it till later to help me get through like the earlier parts of labor. So, yeah, I have a different idea for my birth this time. It will still be in a hospital because I am high risk and I have a blood disorder. Um, I almost needed a blood transfusion, even not having a C-section. So, um, yeah, it's you know a home birth or midwife birth or anything like that is out of the question for me. But I do want to try to be a little more natural than I was last time. So, Okay, um, I think that's it. I had a little time to do a video here. But I think my son is starting to wake up. You can see him on here. So he's making little noises. Um, but I tag anyone watching this to make this video. And um, I hope I didn't scare you too much with my labor story because it, it really wasn't that bad. And obviously I want to go through it again. So, um, yeah, but I tag any of you who are watching this to go ahead and answer these questions because it's always fun to hear what you girls have to say. All right. Thanks for watching girls. Bye.